guys, it's Ariana. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to be reading some more scary stories. So as per usual, I have my Wicked candle in here making the whole room smell like caramel apples. I also have my hot chocolate candle in here. It smells so good. I'm about to go to Bath and Body Works after this and pick up more soaps. Probably not more candles because I have way too many candles, but I'm excited to go and smell all of them nonetheless. So I have a bunch of scary stories that I want to read today and I do have an update from one of my Instagram followers. She's been sending me so many of her stories, so I'm super excited to read this update. So I'm just going to jump on into her story. Hey, sorry it's taken me so long. I've been pretty busy, but here's what I'll share for now if you'd like to read them. We were going on a family vacation. Sometimes when we go away for a few days, we only travel to upper Michigan because we lived in the lower part. So we'll go to a couple towns up there and walk around. My dad's always been a fan of things that are good for shopping. So little towns with stores and vintage markets. We stopped at an asylum. We didn't think much of it. After all, it was newly renovated for the shopping pleasures of tourists like ourselves. When we entered the driveway, I began to feel sick to my stomach. So much so that I was unable to look at my phone to finish the text I had been typing out before we entered the parking lot. My father parked and we all got out of the car and stared at the building in front of us. Here we are. I stared at my sister with a look of concern. It was a tall yellow building with peaks on top. It closely resembled a castle of some sort. We began walking and my dad was further up from us. My mother tugged at my sleeve and whispered, did you know that this place used to be an insane asylum? I don't know why our father was so keen on taking us to places like this. I don't think it's a good idea. I looked over at my sister who was nervously listening to our conversation. I could tell she was also worried about what was to come. When we entered the building, it looked like an underground tunnel. The lights were dim and some of the doors still had cages on them. There were shops in the renovated parts and a restaurant further down. I began walking to catch up with my dad, who was already down the hall pretty far when my mother had to stop to go to the bathroom. My sister and I waited for her outside while my dad looked around. I noticed across from the bathroom door, there was an empty room. The door was caged and it was pitch black. The dimly lit halls didn't illuminate it at all. When my mother left the bathroom, she noticed me checking it out and thought it would be funny to push me right up to the cage door and ask me if I saw anything. As she did, she was holding me to the door and I began to see something dark moving in the corner of the room. I started struggling to get out of her grasp as whatever it was was starting to come towards the cage door. I was finally able to pull away from her and start walking down the hall like nothing happened while occasionally checking behind me to make sure whatever it was didn't follow me. Okay, your mom shouldn't have done that. That's just mean. As we continued walking down the halls, we caught up with my father. Pictures were displayed upon the walls with long written paragraphs explaining the history of the asylum. As we were reading, I noticed my sister off in a different corner holding her stomach. She signaled for me to come over and she asked me if spirits could make you feel sick, to which I told her they could. She said that she was feeling super nauseous and that her head was pounding. Since we weren't able to leave because our dad wouldn't let us, we had to continue on until we got to the restaurant part of the building. As we sat down, put in our orders, my sister began to text me. She was telling me that she felt something pushing down on her shoulders and her head, almost like it was trying to shove her down under the table. I told her that we should just go for a walk since the exit to the outside was right around the corner. We told our parents we were going for a walk and to call us when the food was ready. As we started walking, the further we got from the building, the better she started to feel. She even broke down and started to cry when we received the phone call to come back because she was so terrified of the building. I prayed with her and held her hand as we walked back inside. When we sat down at the table, she was barely eating any of her food, so I tried to eat as fast as I could so we could leave the building again. We were finishing with our food quickly when we rushed back outside, which really pissed my dad off. We waited outside for the remainder of the time that they spent inside the building. As we sat in the car traveling to the next town, there was still a very heavy feeling on my sister. We got out of the car and started walking around, and she started to tell me that something was talking to her, saying horrible things to her for lack of better explanation. I prayed with her, and then my mother requested that we all pray with her. We stopped in the middle of the street to lay our hands on her and then went about our day. She didn't have problems for a few days after that, but when we got home, she started having sleep paralysis and horrible nightmares. Like something in the asylum attached itself to her and was attacking her. Because she was terrified, she decided to sleep in the living room in our house because she could no longer get any rest in her own room. She would sleep on a large chair with a long ottoman at the end of it, making it look like a pullout of a bed of some sort. My mother often slept on the other couch in the living room so my sister didn't feel so alone. My sister started seeing this little girl in her dreams. She described the girl as having long matted black hair and a greenish pale blue hue to her rotted skin and dead eyes. 
She said she could see her standing in the room at night in her dreams until they started to become a reality. She would wake up at night unable to move and she started to hear the floor shift under her. Little dragging sounds on the carpet, little tapping sounds on the chair, then it escalated. The ottoman would begin to shake under her legs, and from underneath the ottoman, a green, lifeless hand would reach up and grab her ankle. This happened a few times, and she started to get really tired of it. She was staying up later at night just to avoid going to sleep, but eventually, she'd fall asleep due to sheer exhaustion. The last time she saw the little girl, the ottoman shook again, and instead of just a hand, the little girl reached out and began to drag herself out from underneath it. She then stood up, stared down at my sister, and began to climb on top of her. My sister told me that the girl had tried to bite her and she had passed out due to pure terror. When she woke up, there was no bite marks on her and no one was there, but she stopped sleeping in the living room and she hasn't seen the little girl again. A year or so after we moved into the house, I made sure to take care of my room. I had my own room at the old apartment building I had lived in, but this room was more private. So I was excited to have it. At first, I was cleaning my room again as I often did and I stepped on something sharp. I lifted my foot to look at what I had stepped on and noticed that I had stepped on a marble. I didn't have very many marbles and most of the marbles I did have had a cat eye on them. This marble was old and much smaller than mine and dented and nicked in a few spots and had a bluish green hue to it. I picked it up and I held it up in my hand to study it for a moment before turning around to go ask my sister if it belonged to her. When I turned, I saw a woman standing in front of me, maybe two feet away. I stood there in shock, staring at the woman. My heart had never beat so fast. She was tall and she had black hair and she was very burned. Flesh hung from her cheeks and forehead and her bright green eyes glued to mine. She stood for a moment then disappeared into thin air. I ran to my sister's room to tell her what happened and she didn't really want to hear about it. Pretty typical for her. She wanted to actually get some sleep that night and honestly I couldn't blame her. After this, I had decided to tell my mom about everything that I had been experiencing. The footsteps, the running in the halls, the knocking on the walls, the scratching from the inside of my closet, the sounds of someone's fingers on the rungs underneath my bed, and the taunting noises of someone walking around the creaky bedroom floor at night. I had told her about some of these things that had been happening every once in a while, but I was holding a lot back in fear that she might doubt me. I decided to tell her about what was going on when she came home one night. As I was talking to her, I began to feel this feeling inside, a pounding ache in my head and a straining fear on my heart. It was almost as if whatever lived in the house was angry at me for talking about it. I pushed through the queasiness until I noticed in the reflection of the window, the burned woman that I had seen in my bedroom was standing about 10 feet away by the television. She looked as though she was watching us talk about everything. I stopped and I turned my head and by the time that I looked and turned around, she wasn't there anymore. I continued to talk about it. I wanted to find a solution and I thought she would be able to help, but as I continued to share with my mom, I continued to feel that feeling, the deep-rooted fear in my bones. I continued on until I saw the woman again in the reflection of the window. However, this time, she was only standing a couple feet away from me. This was enough to make me jump out of my seat and finish the conversation. She said we could finish talking later and that we should just both go to bed. I went back to my room, turned on my lights and a comedy special before drifting off to sleep. Later that night, I was woken up by a loud crash in the hallway. I shot straight up from my bed and waited and listened. My ears perked up when I heard the sound of someone walking in the hallway up to the entrance of my room. I felt a sickening worry in my stomach. I wanted so badly to run, but I was afraid to make noise. Almost as if I thought if I made noise, it would be able to find me. I gripped my blankets harder and I waited. And I waited and I waited. Nothing. I swung my feet off my bed and I leaned sideways so I could look into the hallway. There was nothing there. I decided I didn't want to sleep in my room anymore, so I walked a couple feet down the hall and turned into my sister's room. She was on her bed asleep, but as the floor creaked when I entered the room, she opened her eyes just to look at me. I told her that I was just going to sleep on her floor. I laid underneath her dresser, which had a mirror on it, and I slept pretty peacefully for the rest of the night. When I woke up in the morning, I was talking to my sister, and she casually brought up the fact that the bottom of her mirror had been glowing above my head that night. I asked her what she meant and she said she woke up and saw the bottom of the mirror glowing as if someone had placed a light near the dresser and it was shining underneath the mirror. She said she looked for cars passing by and lights to see if it was a reflection, but the illuminated mirror stayed there for over 10 minutes before she finally fell asleep again, figuring if it was dangerous, it would get me and not her. Anyways, 
That's all I'll share for now. Let me know what you think and if you want more. So I messaged them back and I said, thank you so much for sharing. Like I obviously want to hear more of your stories because all of her stories are so insane and crazy and I don't know how she stayed in this house. So I've had a lot of videos made just like talking about her situations and her stories and stuff because she sent me so many updates and this is the same girl that had the hands ringing underneath her bed and like all of the crazy stuff in her closet and all the crazy stuff in her house and like the woman that was standing behind her when she was playing her piano and just all of that crazy stuff i've talked about it in my other videos so if you guys want to go watch some of those videos i don't really have them labeled so you'll just have to watch my videos just to see her updates but they are insane and so scary and i don't know how she stayed in that house because i would have freaked out but i kind of understand that she was like a kid and she can't just leave because her parents decide to live there. But like, oh my God, that's so fucking terrifying. I'm so sorry that you guys had to deal with this. And I don't understand why if you already live in like such a paranormal place, why your parents want to bring you to like an asylum that is clearly haunted. Like, no, thank you. That's terrifying. And the fact that your mom like pushed you up to a cage and like held you there to see if you could see anything when you were clearly scared. That's just mean. And I don't like that. And I'm so sorry that you dealt with that. And that's just not very nice. So now I'm going to move over to Reddit because I have a couple stories saved. So this one is from the ghost story section and it's from the Reddit author, Your Weird Friend 101. And it's titled, The Ghost in My House Plus Her Backstory. Back in 2016, I was exploring the house that my family just moved into. During my exploration, I made my way to the basement. At first, there wasn't really anything, but then I heard a faint female voice behind me saying, who are you? Naturally, I freaked out and I looked behind me. I then saw a vague figure of a pale woman with dirty blonde hair, a red dress, white hat, and a rose. And I noticed that she seemed to have a stab wound under her rib, near her stomach and right inside of her head. The woman then backed away slightly before saying, don't be scared, my name is Vanessa. After that encounter, I see her near my closet and my windows at night. During those nights, she hums songs. The only song that I've ever identified from her hums were Kitty Callan's It's Been a Long Time. She said it was because I don't sleep enough. And nowadays, she mostly just hums songs when she wants some company. So the backstory of Vanessa. Vanessa was born back in August 16, 1953 in Hackensack, New Jersey. She said that she moved to another state, the state that I live in now, and bought the house back in 1972. She only finished high school when she married some guy with the last name Henderson. Their marriage was very rocky, and Mr. Henderson being physically abusive to Vanessa, with him literally killing their child and cheating on her multiple times. Mr. Henderson violently killed Vanessa since he wanted to be with his mistress. She was only 21, and it was on her birthday. From what I can conclude from my first encounter with her was that she must have died from blood loss since she had a whole lot of stab wounds in major vital areas of her body. She said that she was killed near the boiler. To this day, I don't know where her body is. One theory was that Henderson could have gotten rid of the body in some way, but her body would have been discovered and possibly shown on the media. Another, and most likely one, was that Henderson could have put her body in the boiler since the house was vacant for 30 years until now, which gives time for a body to decompose fully. The last theory was that her body could be within the concrete floor of the basement. The last time I've been in the basement, I saw a cement mixing machine that looked run down and super old. In today's time, Vanessa shows up time to time to chat for a while and tell a story. She also takes care of the other ghosts, making sure they don't harm me. The sad thing is, is that she always mistakes me for her son, Charles. As of today, she had mistaken me as him and read me a story, The Three Little Pigs, and I let her because I know that she's still hurting from his murder. So I don't know if this is a true story. This is just in the ghost story section, but this was really creepy and I wanted to share it with you guys because I found it really interesting. And if it's a true story, then that is very interesting and you have a very talkative ghost and that is absolutely fascinating. So thank you so much for allowing me to read your story. And now I have one more Reddit post that I wanna read and it is from a girl's dad's perspective. So she's reading the story that her dad told her. So it's from the ghost story section again, and it's from the Reddit author no-efficiency-6614, and this one is an encounter. Now, this didn't happen to me, but it happened to my dad. He's not the kind to exaggerate or even believe in the supernatural, but this experience really shook him up. He owns a business that provides safety manufacturing for mining vehicles and the like, and he was on one of his sales trips down to a mining town in Kalgoorlie? I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. It's Western Australia. 
Now, towns like these in Australia are old and remote and have a lot of strange feelings around them due to bloodshed, the miners during the gold rush in Australia, and crimes that occurred around remote towns such as these. As such, paranormal encounters are not unheard of, and I believe my dad had one. He had got back late to his hotel room after a trip out to the mines, and he was exhausted and went straight to bed. At around 2 a.m., he heard loud voices and banging of doors and sat up in his bed. The rooms are set out so that he could see his door directly from his bed down a small passageway. The noise ended abruptly as it assumed it had been some drunk person working or something and was ready to lie back down when he saw something strange. The door to his room hadn't opened, but he could clearly see a young girl making her way down to a short passageway towards him. He couldn't see her features properly as she was quite shadowy and her body seemed to be cut off at the waist as there was no visible legs. I was 16 at the time and as he described her, she seemed to be around my age and height. She came close to his bed and he let out a yell as he was terrified and she seemed to disappear in front of him. To this day, he still doesn't like talking about it and has retired from going on mining trips ever since. And that's the entire story. So that's really interesting. So your dad was just on a mining trip and he experienced a ghost. So that's really cool. I would like to know more of her backstory though because she clearly is described as being cut off from like the waist, but she like came towards him and then just disappeared into thin air. That is really fascinating. So thank you so much for allowing me to read your story. If your dad has any more updates or stories that he wants to share with you and you want me to read on the channel, please feel free to message me and I would love to read more of the updates because that is really interesting. But this is where I'm going to end the video because we are already at the 18 minute mark and I want to go to Bath and Body Works. I want to edit this and upload it for you guys because I've taken about a week off. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys did make it to the end of the video, please make sure to leave your favorite fall emoji because I'm feeling fall. I know it's June, but we are starting to see Halloween things enter stores. So I'm starting to feel very spooky and very happy that Halloween is right around the corner. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys have any scary stories, any paranormal stories, any let's not meet stories or any just scary stories in general you wanna share with the channel, please feel free to message me on Instagram or you can email me. All of my information is listed down below and it's in a pinned comment down below as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys did make it to the end of the video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below for more content like this and I I will see you guys at the next video. Bye.